Chapter 12 Compatibility In many families, there is not that Christian politeness, that true courtesy, deference, and respect for one another that would prepare its members to marry and make happy families of their own. In the place of patience, kindness, tender courtesy, and Christian sympathy and love, there are sharp words, clashing ideas, and a criticizing dictatorial spirit. It is often the case that persons before marriage have little opportunity to become acquainted with each other's habits and disposition. And so far as everyday life is concerned, they are virtually strangers when they unite their interests at the altar. Many find too late that they are not adapted to each other, and lifelong wretchedness is the result of their union. Often the wife and children suffer from the indolence and inefficiency or the vicious habits of the husband and father. The world is full of misery and sin today in consequence of ill-assorted marriages. In many cases, it takes only a few months for husband and wife to realize that their dispositions can never blend. And the result is that discord prevails in the home where only the love and harmony of heaven should exist. By contention over trivial matters, a bitter spirit is cultivated. Open disagreements and bickering bring inexpressible misery into the home and drive asunder those who should be united in the bonds of love. Thus thousands have sacrificed themselves, soul and body, by unwise marriages and have gone down in the path of perdition. The happiness and prosperity of the married life depend upon the unity of the parties. How can the carnal mind harmonize with a mind that is assimilated to the mind of Christ? One is sowing to the flesh, thinking and acting in accordance with the promptings of his own heart. The other is sowing to the spirit, seeking to repress selfishness, to overcome inclination, and to live in obedience to the master whose servant he professes to be. Thus there is a perpetual difference of taste, of inclination, and of purpose. Unless the believer shall, through his steadfast adherence to principle, win the impenitent, he will, as is much more common, become discouraged and sell his religious principles for the poor companionship of one who has no connection with heaven. Many marriages can only be productive of misery. And yet the minds of the youth run in this channel because Satan leads them there, making them believe that they must be married in order to be happy. When they have not the ability to control themselves or support a family. Those who are not willing to adapt themselves to each other's disposition so as to avoid unpleasant differences and contentions should not take the step. But this is one of the alluring snares of the last days in which thousands are ruined for this life and the next. Every faculty of those who become affected by this contagious disease, blind love, is brought in subjection to it. They seem to be devoid of good sense and their course of action is disgusting to all who behold it. With many, the crisis of the disease is reached in an immature marriage, and when the novelty is past and the bewitching power of love-making is over, one or both parties awake to their true situation. They then find themselves ill-mated, but united for life, bound to each other by the most solemn vows they look with sinking hearts upon the miserable life they must lead. They ought then to make the best of their situation, but many will not do this. They will either prove false to their marriage vows, 
or make the yoke which they persisted in placing upon their own necks so very galling that not a few cowardly put an end to their existence. It should henceforth be the life study of both husband and wife how to avoid everything that creates contention and to keep unbroken the marriage vows. Mr. A has a nature that Satan plays upon with wonderful success. This case is one that should teach the young a lesson in regard to marriage. His wife followed feeling and impulse, not reason and judgment, in selecting a companion. Was their marriage the result of true love? No. No, it was the result of impulse, blind, unsanctified passion. Neither was it all fitted for the responsibilities of married life. When the novelty of the new order of things wore away and each became acquainted with the other, did their love become stronger, their affection deeper, and their lives blend together in beautiful harmony? It was entirely the opposite. The worst traits of their characters began to deepen by exercise, and instead of their marriage life being one of happiness, it has been one of increasing trouble. For years I have been receiving letters from different persons who have formed unhappy marriages, and the revolting histories open before me are enough to make the heart ache. It is no easy thing to decide what advice can be given to these unfortunate ones or how their hard lot can be lightened, but their sad experience should be a warning to others.